Yeah. She's here. She's here. <laughs> I'm, it's a, you're here. Okay. Gere. Harris. He's here. Here. Hansen. Presente. Powell. Hume. McGarvey. Natoli. Peters. Here. Chenier. Cerna. Suen. Here. Daniels. Here. Kennedy. Here. Sir. Get this here. You saw. You got that. Yeah. Here. But you yeah. do not have a quorum. Are we still? I don't One, two, three, four, five, six. Eight. So. Oh. Got a quorum? I can count good. Here comes Robert. Here we go. And you have a quorum with Mr. McGarvey. <laughs> and will you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? This meeting of the Sacramento Transportation Authority is cablecast live on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on Comcast, Consolidated Communications, and AT&T U-verse cable systems. The meeting is closed captioned and webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv. Today's meeting will replay Saturday, April 15th at noon on Channel 14. Members of the audience wishing to address the board should fill out a speaker identification form located at the back of the chambers and give it to the clerk. Please speak into the microphone when addressing the board and state your name for the record. Please silence all electronic devices at this time. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, we have comments from the public regarding matters not on the agenda. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to the board at this time? We have no cards? <coughs> okay, thank you. Then we're on to agency update administrative report. Mr. Hom. Good afternoon, members of the board. Um, no doubt you've noticed that there are some some changes, uh, not the least of which is uh, Mr. Brett Daniels. He's, this is his uh, very first meeting as an alternate. And uh, also, uh, in March, the Elk Grove City Council filled the very last seat on the SDA governing board with the appointment of uh, Mr. Darren Soon um, to our board. So Mr. Soon, welcome. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Uh, the second thing you'll notice is where I'm sitting. Uh, Mr. Spencer has resigned as executive director, uh, effective March 31st, and so today I'll be delivering the agency update. Um, we do wish Mr. Spencer well in his future endeavors. Norm, helpful hint, since it's your first meeting like this, you need to lean into the microphone. Oh, okay. okay. <clears throat> well, the big news this week we is the passage of Senate Bill 1. Um, so uh, through the state legislature, uh, SB1 is a hike in the gas tax and an increase in the vehicle registration fee. Um, and, it's, and it's intended to raise $52 billion in the first 10 years, um, specifically for transportation. Um, like probably all of your agencies and everyone else, we're still scrambling to figure out um, what its impact is going to be on them, and specifically here in, in Sacramento County and to the STA. As far as I can tell, uh, most of the impacts uh, to STA and to our measure A projects will be indirect. Uh, but one area that I can tell you that it will definitely impact us is, the, is uh, freeway service patrol. And that's because 25 million, uh, I'm sorry. What is going to impact FSP. you? FSP. Our free, uh, freeway service patrol. Freeway service, oh yes. And that's because $25 million a year of this new package is intended for freeway service patrols. Um, so for those of you who may be unfamiliar with FSP, just let me kind of give you like a, a, a small overview of the program. Um, FSP is a congestion <coughs> relief program. FSP trucks rove the freeways during rush hours looking for abandoned vehicles, or not abandoned vehicles, stalled and disabled vehicles. Um, whenever there's a stalled vehicle on the side of the freeway, it causes drivers around them to slow down. When you multiply that effect dozens, hundreds, or thousands of times, you get congestion. And so the, the, goal, the goal of the FSP program is to arrive on scene quickly, get these stalled vehicles either fixed and on their way quickly, or towed off the freeway where they can't cause uh, additional congestion. Um, and I'm sure all of you have kind of seen this effect happening you know, as you're out driving around. So FSP is actually a very, very effective, very cost-effective way to reduce congestion by maximizing the capacity of our existing roadways rather than adding capacity by, adding, by building new roads. 
So, um, so statewide FSP programs have been sharing the same $25.4 million pot for the past 10 years. And that $25.4 million goes to all of the programs um, throughout the state. And so the, um, the, Modus Aid, the statewide Modus Aid Committee has been asking the state legislature for years and years to increase funding for this. Um, but that's not happened. But it looks now as if the governor himself has taken, is pushing for this. And he included this, or he's been pushing for this as part of, our, part of the SB1 package. <coughs> So SB 1's uh, $25 million for FSP essentially doubles, doubles the amount statewide for FSPs. We don't know what the distribution formula is going to be for that. So we don't know how much that we'll get in Sacramento uh, for our program. Um, but we're hopeful that the monies will allow for us to restore some of the service that we've had to cut over the years and perhaps even uh, uh, you know, add some additional service. It's all, not all good news, however, because um, part of SB1 is a diesel tax. So there's, um, and our, and our F, FSP tow contracts are tied to diesel prices. So for example, um, for our program, we have, um, uh, we have uh, 15 trucks and we pay them on an hourly basis, but we also have a fuel cost adjustment factor that factors in how much the, the current cost of fuel is. So SB1 includes a 20 cent per gallon diesel tax and a 4% sales tax. And so a lot of, so some of the money that will be, additional monies that we'll be getting in as part of SB1, we'll, we'll be turning around and sending that back out because of the higher uh, diesel rates. But we think overall it's going to be a, 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 a great plus for our program. Um, let's see. SB1 is also go, obviously is going to have some impacts on some of our measure aid projects and, and perhaps on our future transportation measures. That's something we're still evaluating and, is, and we'll come back to the board with additional information as we have that. And I'm sure your, your other agencies will do that as well. Um, in other news regarding FSP, uh, there's been a, a major change at the um, admin offices uh, for FSP at, at uh, Caltrans. And we're using that opportunity to um, to work with some of the new staff to accelerate some of our funding agreements. Uh, we're hopeful that we'll be able to bring the 1718 uh, funding agreement to you in August rather than in December or in February. So um, that's something we're crossing our fingers on. Um, in other news, the city of Alton has a new city manager. Uh, Charles Bergson came in and he met with myself and with, uh, with Tim Jones of our staff. Um, Mr. Bergson indicated his desire that Ilton get back into our abandoned vehicle abatement program. Um, if you've been around as long as myself and Mr. Natoli have been, you, you, you know that the city of Galt was actually one of our original um, abandoned uh, SAFSA members. Um, but um, unfortunately, over the years, um, Ilton's kind of fallen behind in their reporting, and we actually have not had an abatement in Ilton since 2006. And so in 2012, when it was time to renew our contracts with all of our member agencies, the city of Alton uh, was non-responsive and we, had, we ended up having to drop them from the program. So our goal had always been to get every agency within the county into the SASA program. And as we added the last one, which was Ranch, Rancho Cordova, um, the city of Alton dropped out. So we're still not quite there having everyone on board, but we're going to do everything we can to help Alton get back into the program. Um, otherwise, uh, the abandoned vehicle abatement program as a whole is performing exceptionally well. In fact, I'm, I'm tempted to use the term going gangbusters, um, but I don't know, really know if, if that's appropriate. But uh, if you look at um, uh, item five, which is the second quarter status report, um, you'll see that um, the agencies abated over 3,100 abandoned vehicles for the quarter. And we have not seen numbers like that since 2008. Um, regarding our independent taxpayer oversight committee, um, or as we call them, the ITOC, um, they continue to meet monthly rather than quarterly. Uh, for the first time in its existence, we have all six seats on the ITOC filled. Um, and the last one was um, the county's auditor controller's uh, designee on the seat, which is Joyce Renison. Um, board member Jeff Harris, uh, representing the STA board, attended our March meeting. Um, is there anything you'd like to add to that? 
Yeah, I'd just like the board to know that the ITOC had a, a really robust discussion about a couple of issues that came up that are actually reflected in the agenda. We'll speak about those later. So it was, it was very informative. Um, happily for me, Bob Holderness is going to take the seat, uh, but I will probably be attending as I'm able to with my schedule because uh, it's actually a pretty good group. I agree, it's an excellent group. Um, the next ITOC meeting is April 27th, and everyone, of course, is welcome to attend, including the public. Um, looking ahead, uh, well, actually, let me look back a little bit. Back in December, I prepared a board meeting schedule that looks like this. And you and you can see, um, this is, you can also see this in item four of your packet. It's the attachment for item four. And what this was, was a, um, uh, what I had wanted to do was to lay out all the major items that would be presented to your board in 2017. Bless you. Um, but according to the original schedule, uh, today we were not only going to present our uh, fiscal year 17-18 budget, but we were also going to present the revenue forecast. Unfortunately, we don't have the revenue forecast ready for you today. Um, so what we've done in the draft budget is we included a kind of a placeholder number uh, with a very conservative 3% growth. Um, but as we get the revenue forecast in line, we'll update the budget and we'll bring that to you um, for, for your review. Um, unfortunately, um, there's a number of other items that, um, that we've, that's on the calendar that we've had to kind of readjust. And I'm going to ask for your patience as we work through some of our staffing issues. Um, but, we, but my goal is that we would still accomplish all of these things within 2017. And then looking even further down the road in June, um, I would like to present um, to the board a three-year work plan. Um, you know, this is something we've never done. We've never, uh, we've never presented a one-year work plan, let alone a three-year work plan, but it's something that I would like to do so that the board can see where we're headed um, and so that the board can become more actively engaged with us and start providing us direction a little bit earlier on in the process than we have traditionally been. And that concludes my uh, agency update. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board? Any uh, one from the audience? I don't have any cards. No. Okay. I, I'm going to go back then to item number one. Uh, Mr. Uh, Tardagia, you uh, weren't able to get here on time, so we'll accommodate you and let you go back to number one. So you spent too much time at Lay's Kitchen at lunch, didn't you? <laughs> Well, um, I saw I, you there, didn't I? Uh, Jeff Tardigia. Yeah. And <laughs> I will say to the board, um, I'm disappointed in the last meeting and the two actions that it, and the results. Item number 13, um, I'm hoping you're not all basing and believing that for going for, for with Measure B, that you are going to wait for, shall we say, legislation to pass. Because, you know, on the one side, even though you're talking about SB1, it still has to go before the people in November. And yes, it's not tax related, but it is dealing with restrictions. And as you pro perhaps should realize, this year politics is not as usual. I'm disappointed that you do not go forward with trying to get the public, the drivers, to understand the importance of public transportation. And that, I think, is something you're going to regret again, because as last year you spent money on trying to educate a small portion of the public. Yes, via the California Public, um, uh, should we say, Budget Council, they acknowledge that you've got 60%. And as via the last STA meeting, it was very clear that um, in the basic regions of San Diego, San Francisco, and Los Angeles, uh, they're likely you have the 60% that will likely get you for this coming, um, shall we say, November decision. But 60 and the 66% that you still need right now is not that many, but I will tell you is, is it took some of us an effort of, of probably a decade to build some of the grassroot effort to dealing with right now of single payer planned. And that's going to be come before you in May 1st. This is not something that probably is on any of your radar. Or maybe it is. I hope it is. But you need to get out there with speakers that are talking about the 
present issue of public transportation. I'm hoping some people will send some representatives to next Tuesday when the UCC is discussing about Los Angeles and the fact that they have, as they're spending billions of dollars, they have seen their public ridership reduce and what they are possibly figuring out of what to do next. That is an opportunity, and this month has been a transportation issue, and I've seen no one there last Tuesday for when it dealt with in the um, San Jose area regarding big data and the knowledge of what is, which is something that for your Connect card is something on demand, is something that you need to be able to understand the useful data that that provides. But again, I will offer to you is, is you pulled and the reason why I'm here is because I couldn't find it, you know, broadcast. Um, so this is why I'm here a few minutes late. Um, but otherwise, yes, guys, you're accountable. And unfortunately, I hope you don't go back to like a decade ago where, gee, what in the world is going to happen with public transportation? And that's my comments, guys. And I will continue listening. But please, somehow figure how you're going forward of making speakers available out there to get people, drivers, not riders, but drivers to understand the importance that you do not want the Sacramento area to become like Los Angeles. And Thank that's you, my comment. Yeah. Thank you. All right, now we have uh, consent. Is there a motion on consent, or is there any member that wants to comment or pull a consent item? Is there a motion? Second. It was moved by uh, Director Harris, I believe, seconded by, oh, Director Hanson. Didn't recognize your voice today. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstain? <clears throat> Item number seven. <laughs> Budget to act actual analysis, third quarter, fiscal year 2016-17. Good afternoon, members of the board. My name is Tim Jones. It's my pleasure to serve as the accounting manager for the Sacramento Transportation Authority. And as uh, we had initiated last quarter, I am presenting to you a, a budget to actual analysis for the recent quarter ending uh, March 31st of 2017. And I'd like to open with uh, just a couple of highlights regarding uh, this budget to actual analysis. The good news is that revenues are up for uh, mitigation fees. We had anticipated uh, mitigation fees are reported twice a year, and we had anticipated at this point in time to have received $2.5 million in mitigation fees. However, we received $4.62 million, which is well in excess of our expectations uh, for this, uh, the, for the first half of the fiscal year. The uh, increased revenues are almost entirely attributed to the city of Sacramento and the uh, large amount of com commercial construction uh, that is currently uh, going on in the city. Secondly, uh, you'll notice that interest revenue is up considerably. Um, as you're aware, the authority uh, is in a swap uh, arrangement with uh, concerning our bond program, and in our swap arrangement, we pay a fixed rate of interest uh, in exchange for or receipt of a variable rate of interest. And because interest rates are increasing, uh, our monthly uh, receipts for that related revenue has increased. And so it is up to uh, year to date 1.14 million when we had expected 450,000. Capital project expenditures are down considerably this year. Um, I have noted that uh, there are several uh, projects um, that uh, several projects and or entities that are spending considerably less than we had budgeted uh, for the current fiscal years. Uh, those of uh, importance are, first of all, the intermodal station. We had um, expected that, uh, we had expected expenditures to be 7.875 million, but they came in at 2.9 million, 
And I think some of that can be attributed to the fact that uh, some of the spending for the station was uh, accelerated. And so we, we saw more spending uh, in the first year of the contract, which was 15-16, and a little less spending in this current year. In addition, county projects where the spending has been 1 .1 million, 1.5 million thus far, uh, were budgeted at 4.275 million. And the Southeast Connector, or the JPA, spending was a million. So far this year, we had budgeted 5.25 million. So what that does for us is it, um, it increases our overall fund balance because we had anticipated spending more than we, than we have thus far this year. Uh, in terms of debt service costs, those costs are up this year, and the reason for that is attributed to uh, planning. I think last year, when staff were uh, planning for the budget for this year, they included the interest, but they didn't uh, take note that there was uh, our first uh, principal payment due on our um, uh, bonds. And so the variance uh, is about $3 million, and that can be directly attributed to the uh, principal payment. So th those are some of the highlights. I thought that they were the most important part of uh, the variances. The, um, the other programs, FSP and the admin programs, have some variances in them, but they are not significant to STA and the budget overall. So at this point, I'd like to open it up uh, for questions and see if I can answer anything, any concerns you have. Director Daniels. Thank you. I was trying to do the uh, pluses and minuses as you went along, and it sounds like you were in the ballpark figure of something like $11 million um, um, ahead of it, ahead of the game. That's correct. And um, so if everything goes great for the rest of the quarters, what do you do with the $11 million at the end of the year? So that $11 million then is uh, carried over or is available to the jurisdictions that are under contract with us currently through the end of this current contract period, which is it's a three-year contract, and it ends in June of 18. So although uh, many have underspent in the current fiscal year, they still have the opportunity to spend up to the total contract value through the end of, or through the end of next uh, fiscal year, June 30 of 2018. Okay, we'll be back at the end of the year to talk about it, yeah. so. Okay, so. good. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much, Tim. All right, You're welcome. I'll just stay up here since I've got the next couple of items. Item number eight, PFM Financial Consulting Services Contract. <coughs> yes, so uh, we had brought this uh, financial services contract to the board in October of 16. And in the staff report, uh, the expenditures were identified as $42,000. And the $42,000, if you're looking at the staff report under discussion, was uh, our expenditures that are directly related to those six items. Those are discrete projects that have a fixed cost of not more than $42,000. What wasn't included in the previous staff report is the fact that um, there are additional uh, or are called ongoing services that are included as part of this agreement with PFM. And those services are at the request of the executive director. And they are part of this three-year contract. And when uh, the additional services are included in the contract overall, it will exceed the $50,000 threshold or authorization limit for the executive director. Therefore, we needed to come back to you and ask for the board's approval to um, allow staff to execute this agreement. Questions? <laughs> director Frost. I was just wondering what those services are because what the way it looks to me like it's a $42,000 contract that's going to be delivered in May and then up to 5000 a month ap thereafter up to 15000 a year for the first year. That's every year for three years or? Yeah, so let me uh, add some clarification to that. So the 42000 uh, includes these discrete services and they're projected to be done by the end of this uh, this calendar year. And this contract is still being um, vetted a little bit uh, between legal 
and uh, and and our our staff. But these discrete services are going to be delivered by the end of the year. The additional services are yes, uh, uh, a maximum of five thousand dollars a month. However, because of uh, in part because of budget constraints. We are limiting the first year of the three-year contract, the expenditures in the first year, to a maximum of $15,000 for these ongoing services. So just, uh, is that I guess normal? I didn't because, I mean, that seems, is that normal? What are those extra services, I guess? I'm sorry, is what I'm I didn't to get address to. that. Yes, okay. you're correct. Um, so, uh, an example of those services are uh, services such as we have what are referred to as standby uh, bond purchase agreements, uh, which are a credit li liquidity facility with, uh, in the, you know, for example, U.S. Bank. And we need the services of our financial consultants to help execute and negotiate uh, those <coughs> agreements. And we have one coming up here in August that we need to negotiate, and they take the lead on that. And we also have a direct loan, uh, as another example, with Wells Fargo Bank. And again, we need uh, our experts to help us with the negotiation process and to work with all the entities that are a part of those um, legal uh, and financial transactions. And so those bond purchase agreements are going to be, if that happens, then that those funds come out of those projects that were the bond purchase agreement or it doesn't come out of admin or does all that come out of admin? That's an excellent question. So there are two sources of funding uh, for this type of work. The one source of funding, the admin, uh, will be um, charged for the $42,000 and the admin will be charged for any of the ongoing uh, services that are non-bond program related. So in the example that I just gave you, uh, the standby bond purchase agreement or say the issuance of new bonds, those costs would be absorbed in our debt by our debt service fund. Okay. And my, I guess my under, I didn't, I served on this board a couple years ago, but it's been a long time and I, and I got my question answered prior to the meeting that this is something that is called for in the, in the measure A. And we will do this every, this is an annual thing that the board already voted on, that this is an ongoing annual uh, contract or an annual yeah, thing this, that we're going to be Yeah, this is doing. a multi-year contract. The previous contract uh, was for five years. Uh, this current contract is for three. <coughs> oh, let's see. Um, I guess that's it for now. Thank okay. you very you much. Another? Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Tim. You're welcome. I take it you're staying at the podium? Yep. <laughs> Introduction of fiscal year 2017-18 STM. We need a motion on this. I'll motion. move it. I'll move the oh, item. I'm sorry. Oh, I'll second. I, I'm sorry, uh, Chair Kennedy. I did have one more question. Okay, let me take uh, the motions first. Okay. Moved by Director Serna, seconded by Director Howell. Sorry. And there's questions. I just had a question uh, relating to the oversight committee in your report, and, and in this report, it's talking about um, the oversight. Uh, committee um, and Caltrans approaching. I, I might be on the wrong item. I might be. Yes, on, you're on a different item. I think I'm on the next item. Sorry. Yeah, Disregard. no problem. We no have problem. a motion and a second. Is all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for a correction. Number nine. <laughs> Introduction, fiscal year 2017-18, STA, FSBS, SAFSA budget. Mr. Jones. Okay, this is our fiscal year 17-18 uh, budget. It includes the agency as a whole. We have uh, separate uh, documents for the distributions of uh, measure A uh, to the Measure A entities. We have an admin budget. Uh, we have the Sacramento Abandoned Vehicle Service Authority, and we have the Freeway Service Patrol. Uh, this budget is uh, uh, typically presented to the board as a proposal um, each year in April, and um, then we leave this item open until June 
so that the public has an opportunity to comment on it. So I'd like to, uh, similarly to our budget to actual analysis, I'd like to uh, draw your attention to a few highlights. You'll notice uh, in the beginning uh, fund balance, the fund balances that uh, there are some funds that are in, let me grab my copy here just one second. In our beginning fund balance, you'll notice that there are some funds that are held in reserve. The 2009 and 2012 bonds, although there are millions of dollars in those, um, uh, in, the, in those accounts right now, that money is not available for expenditure at this time. It's held in reserve by the banks as part of the bond covenants. However, the board does have the option, if it chooses to, at a later date, to free up um, those reserves, but there's a cost and a number of actions uh, that need to uh, happen in order for that to be achieved. And um, uh, going back to Ms. Frost's comment, that would be another example of where we'd need help of our financial uh, services uh, contractor. Um, you'll notice that the, uh, that the Mitigation fees, the development impact fees balance is decreasing. The reason for that decrease uh, in part or in entirely is that we have been spending funds out of that uh, pot for capital expenditures. So as money is flowing in, there are similar outflows. And in this case, uh, you'll notice that uh, the outflows uh, exceed the inflows. Um, our admin um, balance, you'll notice in 2016-17, uh, uh, you'll notice that our beginning balance is a deficit. Um, that deficit has been something that we have been working on over the course of this year. And in a, uh, another document that we will get to shortly, I will show how we have developed a plan to reduce that deficit and uh, it'll be evident that we should have that taken care of uh, by the end of the coming fiscal year. You'll also notice that we are uh, projecting and as Norm had already mentioned that we have a placeholder here uh, for our uh, proposed revenues for the coming year. Um, we're proposing roughly 119 million. Our uh, contractors should have uh, uh, if you will, legitimate forecasts, because I'm not as good as they are, I'm sure, uh, legitimate forecasts that will be pre uh, presented to us early in May. We hope to have them for you in, our, in the May meeting, and if not, it may be uh, in June. <coughs> You'll notice the mit mitigation fees uh, sort of uh, around the same uh, amount as this year, maybe not quite as uh, high, and the reason for that is that some of the construction in the city might start winding down. Um, we've included additional interest uh, in part because of our bond program and the swap arrangements or swap agreements that we have with our banks and the interest that that generates. You'll also notice that we've included a, uh, a larger number for our debt service. And again, that includes uh, principal payments for uh, this coming year. We pay those in the fall. Um, do you have any questions that I can answer regarding um, the first measure A uh, proposal? Director Howell. Um, just a quick question, a point of clarification. You just said that the debt service includes not only the interest, but the principal payment as well? That's correct. The proposed budget and the estimated actual both include those amounts. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Director Frost. Questions? This is a thinking forward question. Okay. Um, it, on the back end of each of these measures, is there a reserve that settles out, you know, pension and debt and all that as we near the end of each one of those programs? Or, you know, if there was never an another measure A or B or C and we played this out to whatever year it plays out in, is there a reserve at the end that settles it out to help pay for the pension and, and uh, any un unpaid pension funding or any of that? And if not, 
are we do we where does that go to if if we have debt at the end of that okay so I, I think there are two questions to answer there in terms of the pension costs that you're referring to uh, you'll find those in the admin uh, budget if you want to uh, it would be uh, on the next the face of the next page our admin budget includes uh, some of the it includes the current pension costs and it also <coughs> includes a uh, unfunded uh, CalPERS liability for pension costs. So that's all that's all included in our three quarters of one percent allocation based on the revenues um, that Measure A generates. So that's where the pension costs are are uh, captured. In terms of uh, your other question, are you uh, paying those each year? Then you're paying those each year. Yes, we pay those with each payroll cycle. Yes, oh, okay. each payroll cycle we pay our pension costs. And then uh, you'll notice this unfunded liability, which we started paying last year. It comes in July, and we pay it. We have a choice of paying it once a month or on an annual basis, but we pay it on an annual basis because it saves us money. They charge a cost. There's additional cost to pay it monthly. Um, so that, takes, that, that answers that question. And in terms of the uh, matching sort of the program expenditures, and the program uh, funding, um, there are a number of ways that we manage that. First of all, we are on this continuous cycle of um, assessing inflows and outflows, working with our financial consultant to help us project those cash flows so that we make sure that the inflows and outflows, uh, at least based on the projections, are um, at parity or better. And the other opportunity or, or a significant opportunity we have is we have a, the opportunity to reset uh, our expenditure plan uh, in 19, 2019. Oh, yeah, so at, after 10 years, we have an option to reset our expenditure plan. And at that point, we will have a robust analysis that will not only provide projections for revenue, but we will also be looking at how much debt capacity we have, how much cash we have on hand, and lining up the projects and expenditures with the various jurisdictions to accommodate or to um, uh, 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 fit within those means. So those are a couple of ways that we address oops, that we address some of the uh, concerns or the question that you posed. And if I could add, Ms. Frost, our, our bond program is 100% um, towards our capital projects it has so our any of the pensions and anything like that that was that is within our three quarters of one percent allocation for administration and there's and, and for uh, paying for our bond program there's a an allocation out of each of our monthly um, uh, uh, monthly monthly receipts from BOE <coughs> that is dedicated specifically for debt service and again with the help of our financial consultant we're always monitoring uh, what our debt service costs are in relation to the anticipated and formulaic, form, formulaically uh, uh, controlled um, allocation for debt service. Thank you. Does that help? Yeah. A little bit? Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. With that, we will open the public hearing. Is there anyone from the public would like to address this issue? Hearing none, we will close public hearing. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Um, well, so what's the motion? So the motion, motion is to continue is to June 8th for adoption. Oh, to continue. Okay. Yes. Correct. Okay. Um, Moving staff recommendation, I believe, is what it is. Yes, you have a question? Yes, uh, Chair Kennedy. I'm sorry. For who, who, I'm sorry. Before we get there, though, who, oh, yeah, who, sure. who, we had a motion from, I believe, Director Hansen and seconded by Director Guerra. Okay. Okay. All right. I just did have one question. I asked at the wrong time, and now I'm asking late, but I really want to ask this question. And it relates to the um, Independent uh, Oversight Committee. OK. And, uh, and there was a request from Caltrans relating to wanting to expedite some funding that uh, I believe went to the staff or to the <coughs> ITOC. And then there were comments within all these notes about, you know, ITOC and staff would be making recommendations. Is the ITOC generally a body that makes recommendations to this board? 
And is it is that how it normally works for would would it normally work that way for Caltrans to go to them versus coming to this board for a request for advance um, funds? Um, the ITOC, the ITOC, was established as part of the Measure A ordinance as an advisory resource to the SDA governing board. And so um, the um, Caltrans request came to SDA staff. And so we'll make, we'll evaluate it, we'll make a recommendation, but we also will ask the ITOC to review it and make their recommendation as well. Okay, I guess I was confused because I'm thinking they were oversight, not advisory. Advisory. But no, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have, if there's any other questions? No. Then we have a motion on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right. Number 10, comments of authority members. And we do have a clock ticking as we have closed session and we're supposed to be out of here in a half hour though. We can go over if necessary. Anybody? Okay, the chair just has two things to say. One is to thank uh, Mayor Holderness for uh, agreeing to serve on the ITOC. I appreciate your service and continued expertise. And uh, second is uh, I'd like to agendize for the next meeting the establishment of an ad hoc committee on the budget, um, a committee of uh, five to seven members. Uh, and uh, anybody who's interested in um, being appointed to that, please email me rather than having names thrown at me right now particularly since we're not all here. And uh, we'll come back and final, f formalize that at the next meeting, uh, assuring that uh, it is sufficiently geographically distributed among membership. Okay. With that, we have closed session. So we will adjourn to closed session. Before you adjourn, can I make some comments? Um, sure. We are required by the Brown Act to make some disclosures before we uh, go into, the, in, into this particular closed session. Uh, so uh, let me state that the real property under consideration is the Sacramento Housing and Redevelopment Agency building at 801 12th Street in Sacramento, California. The negotiator on behalf of STA is Norman Hom, myself. Neg negotiators on behalf of SHRA are Michael Taylor and Mr. Jim Shields. <coughs> Uh, the closed session will be in hearing room one, which is out these doors and to your left. Thank you. And we'll need to announce the uh, closed session item 12, if the clerk can just read that off. Item number 12 is um, STA personnel matters, Sacramento Transportation Authority Executive Director. All right, call back to order the meeting of the Sacramento Transportation Authority. Uh, Councilor, do we have anything to report out of closed session? Yes, report back on item 11. The board declared its intent to proceed in good faith towards signing a lease for office space uh, at the SHRA building, which is 801 12th Street. On item 12, uh, the board acted to appoint Norman Hom as the interim executive director, and that's a six-month appointment. With further details, blah, blah, blah. Yes. Right. Further details? Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, with, with other details to be determined. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Great. Uh, any questions of the board? No, I have <laughs> Thank you. All right. With that, we are adjourned.